Some other factors that affect ventilation, hypoventilation. Carbon dioxide production exceeds the elimination. Never forget that. If I have low ventilations or I'm not breathing adequately, I retain CO2. So how I always think of it, if I hold my breath, my CO2 just stacks on top of each other. And it keeps getting higher and higher and higher and higher. Understand that your body, you, your respiratory drive runs off of this. Okay, you have to have the CO2 buildup and that's what gets you antsy. Like when you're at the bottom of the pool and you're holding your breath and you start getting like fidgety, you start getting anxious because that CO2 is climbing, right? When that CO2 hits a, a point, you need to breathe. Hyperventilation does the opposite. Carbon dioxide elimination exceeds its production. Somebody who's breathing too rapidly will exceed their production of carbon dioxide, okay? And when this does happen, you kind of pass out. If you ever see those people that are having a really bad anxiety or panic attack, and then they pass out, or their fists get so tight, it's because of the carbon dioxide elimination. When we're looking at a CO2 reading, as long as it's within a gas form, meaning you're breathing it, it's gonna be measured in millimeters of mercury. And the normal range that we're looking for is anywhere between 35 and 45, which is considered a normal exhaled CO2 reading. Okay, pH, the normal, when we get, because you gotta remember neutral and pH is seven, right? And I said anything that goes in a upward direction is considered alkalotic anywhere. Anything that goes downward is considered acidotic. Now a normal blood, pH is 7.35 to 7.45, okay? So now here on this chart, as you can see, if my respiratory rate increases, my CO2 is going to decrease because I'm blowing off CO2, right? Now when I blow off my CO2 and my CO2 declines, then my pH is gonna do the opposite and it's going to rise these patients are gonna be considered alkalotic. Now, if my respiratory rate decreases, either, you know, could be from shortness of breath or my patient's on some sort of opioid overdose or my patient's just not breathing at all, my CO2 member rises, it stacks. Once my CO2 stacks, my pH level starts to drop and then that's when my patient becomes acidotic. So your waveform goes in different phases. Now, when you're looking at it, you might think by just looking at it, okay, I breathe in and I exhale. It's actually the exact opposite. Remember the waveform capnography is checking your exhalation of carbon dioxide. <clears throat> so right here, I exhale. Remember your IE ratio one to two, right? Inhale and then exhale. Now, this little dot here at D, which shows your inspiratory downstroke, that is the highest point of our end tidal capnography. Remember, end, the end tidal, the, the end of that breath, okay? That number is the highest point of this waveform, and that is the number that we're getting. So right here, you see 40 is at this white line. <clears throat> in the middle of this would be 35. So we're about 35, 36 on this entitled capnography. But we would have a digital reading of what that number is. But that's exactly what this is, okay? A to B, initial stage of exhalation. So right before we exhale and then start exhaling, B to C, expiratory upslope expiratory or alveolar plateau. This plateau is extremely important, okay? And what I mean by plateau, this flat top on top on these, uh, on these waveforms, that's what we're looking for. And then the inspiratory downstroke. I wanna see this plateau that goes up, across, and then down. And I'm gonna start showing you some waveforms that look a little different. And this is what I look at to see what's going on with my patient. Like I said, I like this tool way better than I like pulse oximetry. 
and I can like I, you will be able to treat by just looking at these waveforms and you'll be able to diagnose stuff. So let's talk about some abnormal waveforms and then we're gonna I'm gonna show you some. Hypoventilation. Now when I said hypoventilation, not breathing, what happens to your end tidal capnography or your CO2 readings? They stack, right? I say you hold your breath and that in, and that carbon dioxide starts stacking in your blood. Now, going back to this and looking at these numbers, if I have a higher number, what's gonna happen to my waveform? It's gonna get taller, all right? So I get a taller waveform. Look at this, here's 50 right here. It's taller than 50. And you can even see, look at the time difference between this plateau and this plateau. Hypoventilations. Next one, hyperventilations, small waveforms, low end tidal. So if I see very small end tidals and the space in between each one is very short, like this, we know hyperventilation. So what I look for in bronchospasms, remember we said bronchospasms or um, like asthmatic patients, patients with wheezing, they're going to have an IE ratio of one to four, right? Also, I'm going to be seeing this very sharp downward slope. We call this shark finning, okay? With shark finning and these bronchospasms, typically, I, by just looking at the waveform capnography, I know I'm going to give a breathing treatment, such as uh, albuterol and atrovent. So like I said, normal plateaus is something that I want to see, okay? I want to see normal plateauing. Um, if I don't see these normal plateaus, and I start seeing just this upward slope like you do here, like you do here. Um, like I said, we call this shark finning. If I see shark finning or these uh, bronchospasms occurring on my entitled capnography, I know that this is something to do with lower airway obstruction. Um, so this is going to play a, a, a very crucial role in our treatment. Let me explain myself. There is something out there called uh, cardiac wheeze. You will come across patients that have no history of asthma, no history of anaphylaxis or allergic reactions, that have a cardiac history, high blood pressure, uh, they might even have history of heart failure, but you hear wheezing. You're like, man, I, I, know, I know my lung sounds, and I know this is wheezing. And then when you look at the intentional capnography waveform, you will not see shark finning. But you're like, I know I'm hearing wheezing. This is considered a cardiac wheeze, okay? If you hear cardiac wheezes, we do not treat it as wheezing. You can see how easily this can be misdiagnosed. And I've been there, I've done it, all right? I've, I've treated patients inappropriately because I heard wheezing and I jumped on it. Um, I'm telling you now, Use your waveform capnography to make those decisions. Well, however you want to call this, I, like I said, I call it shark finning. Um, that is associated with lower airway obstruction, wheezing, asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD, has nothing to do with cardiac. If I see shark finning, I treat with a bronchodilator. So I'm giving this patient albuterol, atrovent, solumedrol, mag sulfate, all right, epinephrine, that's when I see shark finning. If I do not see that, but I hear wheezing, and my patient has history of heart issues, I'm not treating them with, for asthma, okay? That, that's a completely different ball game. But if you don't understand how to read your internal capnography, you're gonna miss it every single time, okay? So understanding waveform capnography is extremely important. You see this one, it says uh, with CHF on it. If I see these short waveforms with zero freaking plateau, if there ain't no flat top to these waveforms, my patient's got rails, all right? These breaths are so short because the patient is unable to take a, a deep breath that right when they breathe in, they're breathing out, breathing in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out because they can't hold that air. This is associated with fluid in the lungs. By just looking at the waveform capnography, I'm already diagnosing the patient for what their breath sounds should sound like, okay? 
like I said, this is normal. This is going to be associated with rails. This is associated with somebody with bronchospasms. Okay. You should be able to just look at waveforms and be able to tell what's going on with our patients.